When it comes to differential equations, how do we go from one of second or more order to a system of first order ordinates? Now, why do we want to do this approach? Now, some might say that we already have well-established techniques for solving first order ODEs, so why bother coming up with techniques to solve second order or higher, since we already have a technique to transfer these ones into a simpler form, and then we apply the methods we already know on this simple form. The whole purpose of this video is to show you how we can go from a higher order differential equation to a system of first order differential equations. Okay, so let's consider, for example, the well-known damped mass spring system. It is a differential equation described by so for example, this can be our system, or it can be horizontal, so we can flip this 90 degrees. If you do it like this, you will have actually a force, which is the weight, so it's equal to m times g. So let's, let's just flip it, okay? So we consider the horizontal case. Since we don't have any external force, we have the horizontal damped mass spring system, so let me just do this, bam, okay? And then here we have zero. How do we go from this? which is second order, so this is second order in time, how do you go from this to a system of first order ODEs? They often tell you, okay, you just gotta do some variable changes, the way you name some sort of Z variable, which is equal to this derivative Y, okay? And then from here on, they just say, okay, here's my system. But they never show the underlying process of how we go from this to this. Now, yes, it is true that you will name some sort of new variable z, which is equal to uh, y prime, okay? But then what will happen? Okay, so here, if we substitute this in this equation, we'll have m times z prime plus dz, and then plus ky is equal to zero. Okay, it's all a bit involved. But can we say that this is a system? I mean, yes, we can, since we have here... This is a first order ODE. When you look at y, so y, if y is our variable, so this is a first order ODE. And here again, if you look at z, this is a first order ODE. So what we came up with is two differential equations, one across this y of t and the other one across z of t. Now this is beautiful and all, but how do we actually solve this numerically? So what is the next step? After this one, when it comes to numerical solutions, having this in mind, okay, we can rearrange, whereas we have derivatives on one side of the equations and all the rest on the other side of the equations. So this would mean that here, this will become, for example, y prime is equal to z, straightforward, okay? And then this one, we basically take these terms, we move them here, and we divide by them. So this would mean that z prime is equal to minus dz minus ky, okay? And you take all of this, we divide by m. Another better way to write this is, okay, that's good. We didn't do much now. However, what if we have this sort of system of two equations? What if we try to vectorize our problem and we try to write it as a matrix vector form? Now, in this case, it would be, so we have y prime and then z prime, as a vector is equal, and you will see in a moment why we're doing this. Okay, it's equal to some sort of matrix here times y and z. Now we want to get y prime. We get it by multiplying some sort of coefficients by y and some sort of coefficient by z. So in a way we have we have y prime is equal to a y plus b z. And if we identify with this equation right here, we can clearly see that a is equal to zero and b is equal to 1. So this would mean that here in the matrix entries, we have 0, 1. And then same principle for this second equation. The dz coefficient is d is minus d divided by m, and the y coefficient is minus k divided by m. So the y coefficient is minus k divided by m, and the z coefficient is minus d divided by m. We made one step further. Now, how do we proceed from now on? So till this point, we didn't do any approximations. We were absolute mathematical reasoning. However, now we have to cross the bridge of the numerical realm since we're having here derivatives, but we don't actually know the values of these derivatives. So we have here derivatives, and often whether you know it or not, when it comes to numerical realm, 
you will discretize derivatives. How are derivatives discretized? For example, here we have a function. You have a point here, let's call it the point i, and you have a point here called i plus 1. So let me draw, draw some axes here. Okay, and then here it will be yi and yi plus 1. Now, the way you can approximate the derivative is simply by doing yi plus 1 minus yi divided by the value here, let's call it ti, ti plus 1, divided by ti plus 1 minus ti. This will be an approximation for the derivative, so dy over dt at ti. Okay, so having this in mind, we can actually go ahead and discretize the derivatives we have here, so with these ones, with this procedure. Okay, so let me actually go ahead and move all of this. Okay, and then I can say that yi plus 1 minus yi, okay, and then I say that zi plus 1 minus zi is equal to, and then we have the, the same matrix, so let me actually copy down this, okay, and I will paste it right here, okay. But then here, remember, we have divided by, divided by ti plus 1 minus ti. Now let's call ti plus 1 minus ci simply delta t. So all of this will be multiplied by some sort of delta t. Okay, now there is a problem. Here you see we have yi, yi plus 1, but here we have just y and z. Should you replace them with i? Should you replace them with i plus 1? Now if, and here's the trick, if you replace them with i, you will get one scheme called the explicit Euler scheme. If you replace this subscript with i plus 1 and i plus 1, this will be called the implicit Euler scheme. But for instance, we are going to focus on the explicit Euler scheme. Now, of course, both of these methods have their advantages and disadvantages, but we will not look into too much details for now. Okay, so from now, we can see that clearly on one side we have i plus 1 and i, and on the other side we have i. Let's separate the subscript i plus 1 and the subscript i. Okay, so this will be the i plus 1 and then z i plus 1, okay, and then is equal to y i and then z i, some sort of vector as well, and then plus dt, and I can just copy all of this down. I copy this, paste it right here, and add the subscript i. But hey, wait a minute, let's say we know the initial conditions of this problem. We say that, okay, at t is equal to 0, we have y0 is equal to some sort of value, and then z0, which corresponds to y prime of 0, so the, the derivative of y as t is equal to 0, is equal to some value. Now remember, this y0 can represent the displacement of this mass right here, so let's set it to, let's say, 0.5. Okay? And let's say we don't have an initial velocity, this would correspond to taking the mass and shifting it to a plus 0.5 in the x direction. So let's say this is a meter, this is a meter per second. Hmm. Now, let's say we have a set of y0 and then z0. Okay, but then wait, if we have this, we can go ahead and replace this here and then here. And then from this one, we can get a y1 and a z1, right? But then if you have y1 and z1, you can replace it here and then here to get a set of y2 and then z2, you know, and so on and so forth. So with this, we can actually find a way to solve, it was a first, second order differential equation, and we were able to solve this with this sort of rough procedure, numerically, by transforming it into a system of ordinary differential equations. Now another fancy way of naming this, instead of having here a vector y, i plus 1 and z plus 1, what you can do, is name another vector called s, which contains in a way the solutions. It is a vector that has y and then z. If I say si, okay, it will be y subscript i and then z subscript i. Okay. If I say s i plus 1, it will be y subscript i plus 1 and then z subscript i plus 1. And if I say s prime of i, okay, this will represent y prime subscript i and then z prime subscript i. Okay. Now you can see with this there is actually a very simple and intuitive way we can solve a complex 
a complex higher order problem using this very simple procedure. Now we saw how to discretize a second order ODE. Now let's go two steps further and say we have a fourth order complicated ODE. How would we solve this? Let's say we have y to the power of 4 as a derivative plus y to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 2. This would be the fourth derivative across time. This would be third, second, first, and so on. And then we have plus y is equal to 0. Now how do we transform this into a system of ODEs? Applying the same exact same logic, we first set z is equal to y prime. We set, for example, h is equal to z prime. We set k is equal to h prime. This will be a little bit complicated. And what, the, what else do we have? Oh, we can say that f is equal to h prime. Okay, so let's see where we got. So this will be equivalent to y2 prime. This is y3 prime, and this is y4 prime. We don't need this one. Now let's replace all of this. It would mean that this equation right here would be, so k prime plus k. We can say then plus maybe z prime, okay. And then plus z plus y. For example, now k prime here represents the derivative of a third derivative, so it's the fourth derivative corresponding to this term. k corresponds to a third derivative, so it corresponds to this term. And then here I chose that my second derivative is here, h is equal to z prime. I can go ahead and change this z prime to h, for example, but I left it at, I left it at z prime plus z, which corresponds to this one here and then this one, and then our basic y variable. So this would be a first equation, but we need three others. Since we had a fourth order differential equation, so this would represent my first one. Second one would be, for example, hmm, okay, let's see, here we will have a problem. Since we said earlier, remember, that we only take the derivatives at one side and all the rest in the other side. If you apply this logic here, we'll not know which derivative we keep in one side and which we keep in the other side. So it's actually better to leave them here. Instead of calling this z prime, as we did here, I will call it h. And this will solve the problems. So we will have k prime on the, on one side and all the rest in the other side. Okay, and then we need to express, for example, h prime is equal to k, z prime is equal to h, and then y prime is equal to z. And then with this, now we have four equations, which are first order differential equations. Okay, so by rearranging all of this, you will find that at the end. Okay, so this would be now our system. If we vectorize it, say, okay, we have some sort of S prime that is like S would be Y, Z, H, and K in this order. It'll be equal to some sort of matrix times S. Now, what is this matrix? I'll go a little bit quick about it. So this would be like zero. Since you don't have Y, we only have Z. So it'd be zero, one, zero, zero. Here, same, we don't have anything but H. So it'll be zero, zero, one, zero. And here will be zero, 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 one. And this one would be minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Okay, so this would, in a way, be the equivalent of this differential equation by using this sort of logic we did right here. And then of course you discretize this one, so you will have si plus 1 minus si divided by dt is equal to this. It will mean that si plus 1 is equal to si plus dt times this matrix times s. Okay. So hopefully by now you know the procedure when it comes to going from a differential equation of higher order to a system of ODEs. Now, to prove the point, let me show you actually how we can do this quickly in Python. Okay, so let me bring this one right here. All right, here I basically summarized all the steps we did. So we had an initial equation that we reordered, discretized, arranged, and so on, and we vectorized. At the end, we get this sort of form. Okay, so let me make this a bit bigger. Maybe not too much, okay. Let me run this where we import matplotlib and then um, numpy, okay. Now here I set the parameters m, d, and k, creating a 
time points from 0 to 10 seconds across, let's say, 11 time points. So we will discretize our temporal domain into 11 points. Okay. I define the dt, which represents the difference between two consecutive time points. Okay. We define the S matrix here. The S matrix will contain both y and y prime at each time. So it will be of length ln time points, and then two. This, the first for y and the second for y prime. We set some initial conditions here, saying that, OK, as you did right here, say that, OK, y0 is equal to 0 0.5, and z0 is equal to 0. This corresponds to s0, as we did right here. OK, I define my matrix. So this one, I define it. OK, and then basically, I just do a for loop. I loop over this with as many time points as we have. We start from 0, and then we go from 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 11, like so. If I do here s of i plus 1 is equal to coef matrix, this represents the matrix multiplication in NumPy, okay? And then at the end, I extract the solution. More or less basic stuff. Now, if you compare this with the analytical solution, so if I run this, it's not this one, it's just solution. Okay, if I run this, now this would be the analytical solution we get for our problem, having these constant values. So m is equal to 2, d is equal to 1, k is equal to 2, and you have an initial position of 0 0.5. Okay. Now you might ask me, where did I get the solution? This is actually a whole video I made about how we can solve differential equations symbolically using Python, which is this video right here, if you want to check it out. Yeah, I will not go into too much detail since it might take too much time. But feel free to check that video. I did a very detailed video explaining all of it. And I also made a notebook at the end summarizing all the key steps. So if you want to check it out, feel free. Okay. But then if we plot both our results, let me run all of this. Okay, we have here, the first plot is the analytical and the second one is the numerical one. You see, okay, hmm, this is kind of strange. We do not seem to quite match the analytical solution. Here it is in blue and the numerical one is in red. Now this is in a way the problem when it comes to using this explicit method since here remember what we did we said okay this vector we consider it as a time i okay and this is also called as the explicit order method which once you run your code this will lead to an artificial growth of energy in our system. Now this growth is purely artificial and numerical, actually, depending on the scheme you use. Now, one naive way to reduce this error might be to just decrease the step size here. It'll be, okay, so let me print, print dt. Initially, we had a step size of one, which is pretty mediocre, let's say. If we increase here the number of overall points, we'll have a step size of 0 0.1. If I run now the UD code, you see that we get much closer to the analytical solution. Let's say we decrease it even further by increasing the number of points. Let's say I have 501 points, okay, and then I run all of it. And then you can see that pretty much we are almost matching the solution. If I take here a longer time, so we went from 0 to 10 seconds. Let's say we went from 0 to 100 seconds. I run this, and you can see that there is still a problem with this growth of energy. Now again, I might go and play around and add a bit more steps, use a finer grid. You see it gets better, but you see it's, it's in a way a game. The longer is my simulation time, the smaller my step has to be when using this explicit order method. Okay, so this wraps up the topic I wanted to speak about in this video. Hope everything was clear for you and you were able to grasp a little bit the general aspect of it and that things were clear and all. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, maybe leaving a like, showing your support. I highly appreciate it. Anyway, that being said, this has been this. Peace.